Peter. That senor. You know, I don't know why this should be so tough to put together. It says right here on the box, this model automobile can be put together by a three-year-old. Maybe that's the trouble, Tommy. You're too old for it. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Sands. Hi, Tommy. Good afternoon, Mr. Sands. Good afternoon, bye. Any calls? Oh, yes, Mr. Sands. Oh, oh, I went to the beauty shop on my lunch hour, so I brought something back. It's all right, bye. <laughs> How's the master mechanic doing? Oh, not so hot. You know the trouble with these do-it-yourself kits? After you're through, that's what it looks like. You did it yourself. <laughs> Bring it around later. Maybe I can help you. <laughs> Oh, Vi, would you get the American Entertainment Agency for Mr. Sherman? He'll take it my office. Right this way, Jason. American Entertainment Agency? One moment, please. Hi, Susie. Hi, kids. Everything under control? Oh, sure. Uh, Susie, what's a four-letter word for sea eagle? Sea eagle. Earn, E-R-N-E. -E. That's right. Uh, did you have a good lunch? Well, I had the four-course businessman's lunch and a few stairs from four-course businessmen. <laughs> What's a biblical weed? A biblical weed. Care. T-A-R-E. It just fits. Susie, you're wonderful. Why don't you ever do crossword puzzles? Oh, I don't know. I probably wouldn't be good at them. Did Mr. Sands get back? Just before you did, he has a Mr. Sherman with him. Sherman. J.B. Sherman of the American Entertainment Agency? What's he doing in there? Well, he's an agent, too, isn't he? Client rustler is more like it. <laughs> Mr. Sands shouldn't talk to him except through iron bars on visiting day. I wonder what it's all about. I'm going to find out. This calls for a little undercover work. <laughs> now, Peter, you've got to realize that this is just off the top of my head. But I thought that once we had the ball in the center of the court, we could uh, volley it back and forth. You see... Hey. Uh, J.B., I'd like you to meet my secretary, Miss McNamara. Uh, Mr. Chairman. How do you do? Well, I thought you'd like me to take a few notes. Oh, well, no, not exactly, Susie. You see, it's still in the discussion stage. Oh, what is? The discussion about uh, uh, what we were discussing. The discussion about what you were discussing is still in the discussion stage? That's right, so we don't need you now, Susie. Thank you, Susie. She's really a remarkable secretary, J.B. Do you know she can be sitting out in that office and see exactly what's going on in my mind? Our picture has been temporarily interrupted. What's that, Susan? I'm sorry I interrupted you. Not at all. Not at all. What happened? Ooh, what did you find out? What did you hear? Well, if silence is golden, I left a fortune in there. <laughs> now, what would an FBI man do in a case like this? Well, if he tried to listen in on his boss, J. Edgar Hoover would probably fire him. <laughs> listen in, that's it. Well, it's a big move, J.B. I'll have to give it some thought. What are you doing? I'm changing the date on your calendar. Susie, it won't be tomorrow for at least eight hours. <laughs> I know, but why wait to the last minute? She's uh, very efficient. As I was saying, J.B., I'm flattered by your offer, but I've got a good business going right here. Oh, I know you have. Well, I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't think you had. Now, Peter, you know my reputation for fair play. Fair play? <laughs> But, J.B., your agency is already one of the largest in the country. It's going to be the largest in the world, Peter, because I know how to get a lot of work out of my people. Maybe I'm a slave driver, but... I'll say he's a slave driver. You remember Hazel Lewis, his secretary? Well, she just fell flat on her face with the nerves breakdown. It's a hard decision to make, J.B. I've built this agency myself. I'm my own boss. Your own boss. I'd say more like your own prisoner. Peter, with a big agency behind you, you could have more time to yourself. You could go to Europe when you wanted. Hawaii, Acapulco. Why, you can't even take an afternoon off to play golf. And look at that. Why, well, you shouldn't have to be taking pills. I never took a pill in my life. Come in with me, Peter, and I'll have the biggest, uh, we'll have the biggest agency in the world. Sounds good to me. I'll think it over. I have to fly to Chicago, but I'll be back on Thursday, and you can give me your answer then. 
a partnership with J.B. Sherman. If any two people weren't meant for each other, it's those two. Well, they'd probably drive each other crazy. Yeah. In a business where ulcers are standard equipment, there's no need looking for one. <laughs> You know, Peter, I must congratulate you on your excellent office staff. Here it is, only 3.30 in the afternoon, and they're all through their work and ready for fun. Well, at international artists, work is fun. So long, Peter. See you Thursday. So long, Jamie. Mr. Sands, I'd like to talk to you. Oh. Oh, Susie, uh, Mr. Sherman and I have been Mr. discussing Mr. Sands, you simply cannot go into partnership with that man. I, I mean... Um, How did you know we were talking about a partnership? <laughs> now, what else could you be talking about? You know, Susie, sometimes I think you really can read my mind. How do you do it? It, well, it's easy if you know how. Now, why can't I go into business with Mr. Sherman if I like? Oh, Mr. Sands, your personalities are so different. He's shrewd and unscrupulous. Maybe that's the kind of a partner I need. But his reputation... He has a reputation of being a good businessman. He runs the most efficient office in town. Yes, I know his methods. Well, uh, we'll have a chance to find out. We will? Yes. He's lending us the man who put his office in shape. He'll be here tomorrow morning. Oh, Mr. Sands, you're making a terrible mistake. Oh, now, Susie, he runs his office like a well-oiled machine, and that's the way this office has got to be run. Believe me, we'll all be better off. Well-oiled. Now, look here, you don't know Mr. Sherman. I know all I want to know. I don't want to discuss Mr. Sherman any further. But, Mr. Sands... We are going to have the biggest talent agency in the world. There isn't a star we couldn't represent. I know I'm going to get the business. Like you never had it before. I still think Mr. Sands has a lot of nerve bringing in an efficiency expert to spy on us. Well, he's not going to push me around. I'm going to follow a pattern of passive resistance. Yeah. What's that? Well, there once was a wise man named Mahatma Gandhi. We're going to do what he did. You mean come to work in a bed sheet? Oh, no. Shh! Here he is. 9.15. I'm Oliver Benson. Will you tell Mr. Sands I'm here? Yes, Mr. Benson. M -m Mr. Sands, Mr. Benson is here. And now, uh, who do we have here? Well, we have uh, Violet Praskins, Tommy Simpson. Yeah, how do you do? And I'm Miss McNamara, Mr. Sands' secretary. Now, how do you do? How do you do? Ah, oh, Benson. I see you've met the staff. Mr. Benson is a top efficiency engineer, and we're lucky to have him with us. We are? I mean, we are. <laughs> well, thank you. I've talked to Mr. Sherman, and I've got some good ideas. Yes, I want you to give him your full cooperation. Yeah, well, I just want to observe your office procedure. You won't even know I'm around. Fine. Good luck. You may need it. <laughs> hey, Simpson, get this closet cleaned out so we can see what we have here. Yes, sir. McNamara, may we go into your office? Oh, by all means. <laughs> Carry on, Paskins. <laughs> McNamara, the basic rule of simple office efficiency is to make the right step to the right place at the right time. Every movement of your body must have some meaning to it. Oh, well, you sound like a mambo teacher I used to have. <laughs> Miss McNamara, I think it would be best if you just observed your normal office routine for the time being. Just pretend I'm not here. <laughs> yes, sir. And I'm not here. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-eight seconds. Those filing cabinets should be closer. Yeah. Just pretend I'm not here. Well, that's rather difficult. <laughs> Stop. 
Mr. Benson, this may look like vodka, but it's only H2O. Uh, no, 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 McNamara, you don't understand. According to a recent survey on water consumption habits conducted by the Schwein Kitzinger Committee, it was determined that the average person drinks only one half the water in a paper cup and throws the rest away. Well, maybe they aren't thirsty. <laughs> this is sheer criminal waste, McNamara. Oh, all right, I'll do it your way. <laughs> <laughs> better, much better. I'm still thirsty. <laughs> Take another half cup. <laughs> I hope you're never around when I'm trying to put out a fire. <laughs> What's the matter, McNamara? May I leave the room? That isn't necessary. Give me the trade papers. Excuse me, Mitzi. But I think it's silly, Mitzi, to buy a pair of pink shoes if you're only going to use them once. I think I can borrow some. Wait a minute. Susie, do you have pink shoes? Pink what? Shoes. No. Oh, no, Susie doesn't have any, Mitzi. But wait a minute. Helen, are you still on? Oh, good. Helen, Mitzi has to go to a wedding Saturday, and she, she needs a pair of pink shoes. What size do you wear? Oh, dear, that's too small. Wait a minute. Oh, now, don't go away, Mitzi. I'm still working on it. Nancy, do you have pink shoes? Saturday night? Oh, I see. Well, hang on. I I'll see what I can do. Donna? Oh, good. I was afraid you'd hung up. Donna, if you lend Nancy your gold slippers, she'll lend Mitzi her pink shoes, and Mitzi will lend Helen her black suede, and Helen will lend me her red and white spectators. Oh, all righty. I'll see what Grace has. Grace, what size shoe do you wear? Size 9C, and I don't have any pink shoes. <laughs> You sound funny, Grace. Do you have a cold or something? <laughs> Hello? Oh, I, I have to go now. B bye, Mitzi. Bye, Helen. So long, Nancy. Bye, Donna. Bye, Grace. Does this go on all the time? <laughs> it's all right. None of our clients ever calls before 11 o'clock. Well, it's obvious why. They couldn't get through. <laughs> McNamara. McNamara. Shh, I'm pretending you're not here. Is this part of your duties? It is. I'm circling the items about our clients so Mr. Sands won't have to read the whole paper. Well, the entire procedure is a waste of time and money. I shall have the subscriptions canceled immediately. Well, I never... A girl can't even make a simple telephone call around here anymore without some peeping Tom staring over her shoulder. And that's exactly the way this office will be if that merger goes through. Personally, I am fed up. Susie, let's just ignore all of Mr. Benson's suggestions from now on. That'll get rid of him. Give me liberty or give me death. Sit down, Patrick Henry. <laughs> I think I have a better way of getting rid of Mr. Benson and Mr. Sherman, too. How, Susie? Well, instead of ignoring Mr. Benson's suggestions, we'll do everything he wants us to do. <laughs> McNamara, I don't believe in employees socializing. However, technically, I'm Mr. Sherman's employee. Yes? Uh, so, I thought it might be nice if we could have dinner together some night. Well, it would be nice, Mr. Benson, but I'm all booked up until November 4th, 1986. Well, we could... Uh... <laughs> really, Susan, I'm not as much of a bore as I seem. Uh, no. <laughs> You couldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> Mac 
McNamara, how much coffee do you prepare in this office each day? Oh, I don't know, about five or six parts. Depends on how hectic things are around here. Mm -hmm. Coffee, cream, sugar, time to prepare, time to drink, time to do the dishes, electricity. Well, according to my figures, the consumption of coffee in this office represents a net loss of approximately $425 per year. Well, it won't anymore. The consumption of coffee in this office is now a thing of the past. Oh. Susie, the trade papers aren't marked. How come? Well, Mr. Benson's canceling them. He says it's an unnecessary expense. No trade papers? <laughs> Why, he's crazy. Yeah, uh, well, I guess he knows what he's doing. Oh, of course he does. Besides, it was your idea. Yeah. Uh, is the coffee ready yet? No, he's canceling that, too. What? Yes, well, he says that you're drinking $425 worth of coffee a year. That much, huh? Yeah, uh, well, send Tommy out for a container. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Sands. He won't be able to go. He's rearranging the file. Oh, that's right. So he is. Had enough, Mr. Sands? What do you mean? Well, I thought perhaps you were doubting the advantages of having an office that runs like a well-oiled machine. No, Susie. Sherman was absolutely right. An agency should not depend upon one man alone. But think of the freedom you have. Well, well, you're your own boss. Think of the freedom I haven't had. If I merge with Sherman, I'll be able to take off for Paris whenever I want to. Uh, golf, fishing. <laughs> you know, I might not even need these. Uh, Susie, get me a glass of water, will you? Was a full cup too heavy to carry? Benson's orders. He says we're using too much water. Susie, how are we doing? Not so good. Mr. Sands likes the office well oiled. Well, for goodness sake, what are we going to do? Mr. Sherman's coming tomorrow morning. Now, just a minute. We haven't succumbed to slave labor yet. I still have a few ideas. Oh, Susie, I knew you'd come up with something. Oh, would you like to see a movie tonight? Oh, no, dear. I have a very important dinner date. Oh? Yes, this will probably be one of the most important dinner dates I have ever had. Susie, who's the man? Well, Miss McNamara, are we ready? Yes, we're ready, Mr. Benson. And then allow me. <laughs> Good night, Praskin. <laughs> Mr. Sherman. Good morning. Mr. Sands. Good morning, Mr. Sherman. Mr. Sands is expecting you. Please go right in. <laughs> oh, good morning, Mr. Sherman. Mr. Sands is waiting for you. Thank you. <laughs> Susie, our Waterloo is at hand. Out of the way. Yeah, he's in a washroom checking on the soap situation. I told him if we made our own soap, we could save money. Good. Now for the coup de grace. Good luck, McNamara. Peskins. Good luck, McNamara. Simpson. And I think that... Here are the letters of agreement, Mr. Sands. Oh, thank you, Susie. And if you don't mind my saying so, I think you're being very wise to merge international artists with Mr. Sherman's company. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Susie. For a while there, I thought I detected a certain lack of enthusiasm on your part. Oh, no, I think it's wonderful. This way you can do all the things you always wanted to do. Go to Europe, play golf in the afternoon. 
Oh, by the way, when was the last time you were in Europe, Mr. Sherman? Well, I've never really gone, but I don't see how that's important. And when was the last afternoon you took off to play golf? I don't play golf. Isn't that interesting? Say, what's all this have to do with our agreement? Yes, Susie, what are you referring to? Oh, Mr. Sherman's wonderful generosity. You see, he doesn't take vacations, but he doesn't mind if you do. Isn't that nice? And uh, you won't be needing these pills anymore, Mr. Sands. Mr. Sherman's desk has about 14 different kinds of pills we never even heard of. J.B., I thought you told me you never took pills. <laughs> Once in a while, nervous stomach, you know, but I've never gotten an ulcer. No, he doesn't get ulcers. He just gives them. Just a minute, young lady. I resent your accusations. I have a reputation for fair play. Ask anyone. Yes, just ask anyone. Ask one of Mr. Sherman's former partners. They had agencies just like yours, and just like you, they joined American Entertainment Agency. Well, what happened to them, J.B.? Well, we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things. They, they disagreed with me from time to time, so I bought them out. Yes, and they were so happy to get away, they sold out for practically nothing. Well, that wasn't the story in the paper. Of course it wasn't. Miss McNamara seems to have stumbled on some libelous rumors. Now, go ahead and sign that agreement. I have another appointment. Well, I don't know. Now, look, Sands. If you don't want a partnership that'll mean a great deal of money to both of us, just forget it. All right. Susie, you put the carbon paper in back. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Susie, you put the carbon paper in backwards. Yes, but I'll be it right away. No, uh, that won't be necessary, Susie. I can't sign the agreement now, and uh, frankly, J.B., I don't think I ever will sign it. All right, Sands, have it your way. It's obvious we can't get together on a deal. Thanks to you, Miss McNamara. Good day. Thanks to you, Miss McNamara. Susie, how long have you been with International Artists? Ten years. Mm-hmm. And how long is it since you've made the silly mistake of putting your carbon paper in backwards? Not since I left secretarial school. <laughs> no, there's one thing I don't understand. How did you know so much about Sherman's past business activities? Well, I had to find someone who knew Mr. Sherman very well. So last night, I had dinner with Mr. Benson. Benson? Yes. And you'd be surprised how he loses his efficiency after seven martinis. You went to dinner with Benson? <laughs> McNamara, I can't put. <laughs> What's that for? Courage, above and beyond the call of duty. <laughs> hey, Mr. Sands, hey, Mr. Sands, I've just thought of a wonderful way to fix all the troubles around here. What a coincidence, so have I. Oh, good. Now, you take this chart beginning Benson. on Monday. Uh, uh, yes. Hey, Mr. Sands, I... But, but Mr. Sands! <laughs> Congratulations, Sands. You just did what no well-oiled machine could ever do. 